Now, here comes the run game. I don't think the run game is particularly strong in this set. We have the fullback, or the, I'm sorry, the power O. So we'll run that. I'm, I believe the way that they block this, it's an outside run. So I believe they block everyone inside the box and pull for the linebacker on that opposite side or the play side. Which that's what it looks like. That's that's the rule here. The handoff is very deep and he's not at a trajectory toward the line of scrimmage. So he's not moving toward the line. He's moving parallel to the line of scrimmage. So it makes it hard to cut the ball upfield. Which if someone's running a formation where they are shifted, you know, to the left, sure, that's that's fantastic. Should be able to get the outside. Our receiver could block we would have had a bigger gain if I didn't have to run the hump and the hump as far as football terms are when linemen or someone gets penetration and you basically have to run around them to get to the outside so this plays good for reaching the outside it probably is pretty good if I let me see if I flip this what happens okay so the cover three guy moves to the opposite side and usually in a lot of the videos I've put up I tell you to flip the play and run away from that cover three safety that rolls down into the box. And the reason why in those formations that I told you to do that, you can flip it is because they were even sets. In this set, it's not an even set. We have two receivers on the left. We have one receiver on the right. So because of that, the safety that rolls into the box is always going to follow that receiver. So this play will always go to the cover three defender that's rolled into the box. All right, so just know that. If someone doesn't Y right, you're going to be running this usually to a side where you don't have numbers. You might have numbers. I mean, if someone runs some wackadoo defense where it's unbalanced and they're doing some crazy stuff like this and they're trying to send a nano off the right side and taking him all the way out here because they're trying to bust through that B-gap right there or they're trying to bust him through you know, the outside or bait the tackle out and get... You know, Nada going in the B-gap. You know, whatever. Whatever crazy wild defense these guys want to run. All right, they're, they're going to run it. And, I mean, if they run something like that, our receiver again could block. Like I said before, we would be golden. If you know that your opponent is running defenses like this, what do you think you would do? Notice that everything is good. Everything's golden except my receivers, particularly Matthews, can't block worth a, worth a lick. So... I might substitute my tight end in there. All right, so if I notice that those are the kinds of defenses that I'm getting, I might just go right in my sub, substitute my tight end in, and then run that. All right, and run it right to that open side. And I would hopefully get a big gain and my guy can sustain a block because I'm calling the right play based off of numbers, angles, and you know I'm making all the correct decisions. I don't want my computer players to screw it up for me when I'm making good decisions. So in that situation, I might do that. So this runs okay if you want to hit the outside, and for whatever reason, you have numbers on that side, even though most likely you probably will not. So the other option is the fullback inside, which I believe is going to be a better run. The only thing is, is that you have a tight end in that spot. You can get a halfback there, I believe. So we're going to check the packages, and we're going to find out. The way that this looks as though it runs is like inside zone with a lead blocker. And that's exactly what it is. I I really do like this play. I like this play a lot. All right, this play is very good. I can bend it. I can bend it back. I, I really think that this is a very strong run play against a lot of different sets. I mean, if someone's really packing the box, you can stop it. It's not something that's unstoppable, but it's good. This run's good. And I, yeah, I can get the outside, too. Yeah, this runs good. This is with my tight end. All right, this is with my tight end. So if I get a halfback in there, which I'm going to check in my subs, if I can package a halfback there, this that plays money. That plays very good. So let's go to our packages. Halfback sub, wide receiver flip, strong slot, tight end slot. That puts my fullback there, it looks like. I put my fullback there, so, all right, how can we get around that? How can we get our halfback there? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go into our substitutions, and we're going to put whatever halfback we want to go in that spot. I want Turbin in there. 
and we're going to put him there. So now when I go in, boom, now I have a halfback there. Alright, that's how you do it. You're not going to be able to substitute using the RB and the formations, so that's the way you're going to have to do it. Yeah, this plays money, dude. This play is so money. So if you just run into the weak spot. So if someone's spreading their line and spreading their linebackers, we're probably going to keep it inside because now they have leverage outside. So I'm just going to go over quickly. Our running back picks up that block, and our running back is key to pick up that block because normally in an inside zone, he there, there would be no one there to pick that block up. So that's what makes this so good. We have that extra blocker on the inside. So we'll, uh, let's say, pinch the line, pinch the linebackers. We should be able to get it outside in case someone wants to do some wackadoo garbage like this. All right, so we're able to get it. If someone were to shift and shift, which is a common defense, particularly out of the 4-3, and let's blitz all my linebackers. I'm blitzing everybody. Let's see how this picks up. We're able to get the outside. All right. So you can run this inside, outside. You can bend it back. So I can bend it back, too, if I want to. Get three yards. All right, so this play is just straight up money. You just have to be able to read it. All right, so let's go in, and I'm going to show you what audibles I'm going to use. That play comes out. That's going to be in the audibles. Stick up. I want the screen there. And the trail. Where's that trail at? The trail. So these are the audibles I probably would run. And what play would we come out in? We would come out in wide receiver corner. And the reason why we come out in wide receiver corner is because... We have all the other plays in our audibles. Those are the plays that we're going to run in this set. If I go into a formation and it's something that I want to run, that's how I lab it. I go in, I check it out against multiple different types of defenses. I see what type of run options we have. I also look at if we have any screens, things to keep the defense honest against the blitz. And that's one last thing that I didn't talk about. The reason also why I like this set a lot is that right from the huddle, I can just hit LB and up on my D-pad. And what does that do? It creates a max protect. So I have three damaging routes that are going out, and I have two running backs protecting. Most blitzes aren't going to work against that. All right, so that's another reason why I like this so much. And I'm running this in this particular instance out of the Indie book. I know it's in the Pittsburgh book. The Pittsburgh book's good. Indie book's pretty good. So, you know, check them out. See what you think. I think it's also in Arizona. So that's it. That's how I lab. That's how I go in, check out a formation, go through the plays. The video is really long. I'm sure that, you know, it's going to take you a little bit to watch it. You may learn some things. Now you're definitely going to learn some things. So that's it. Thanks for checking in. It's Big J Glee signing out. And continue. Game strong.